said 24 to 20, 20, 20 uh, to 30, that is the group um, that where you have two categories in rural areas. One are those who are in the rural areas and agriculture is by choice, or they are in rural areas and agriculture is by default. I don't like this general treatment of the youth, as if they are one homogeneous group of people, of young people. It, it, we have to have um, a differentiation and have different cohorts because it's only by understanding the, the needs of the different cohorts can we begin to think about the solutions to them. The, the people who are doing research and studies help us to generate knowledge on the needs of rural people in the different cohorts and different contexts. The political will and commitment is there to drive um, uh, youth interventions at different levels, but it's such a huge task. And the knowledge gap is, gaps are so huge that actually you don't know where to start from. Tracking the 30% uh, job creation for youth in their culture sector. Okay? Very few countries have data to report on that particular indicator. We define correctly the, the, the indicator for tracking that progress, but secondly, to partner and support member states to improve their data collection systems. The population in Africa is expected to double and reach 2.5 billion people by 2050. And most of them, still, most of them will live in rural areas. What we need is in rural areas, modern infrastructure, education and vocational training, access to finance, high-speed internet, improved market access, increased productivity in the rural economy, and so on and so on. So we need profitability on the farms of, of the current generation. And then two is to look at uh, which many of you have addressed the aspect of value chain development. Most of the times, as we are saying, we don't have the land. Sometimes youth might not need the land, but might contribute along the value chain. In the short and medium term, the food system on and off farm development offers the biggest growth and job potential with focus on political reform, vocational training, value chain development, as well as more agricultural investment with increased involvement of the private sector. It's about skills enhancement. But this has to be done differently, like Brent you have asked, differently in terms of having many of our areas doing vocational, mentorship and incubation centers. This can help youth to learn from themselves. It is important to organize this youth because in organizing them, you can see their scale of their ideas and all that, but also have their voice, is policy and will. And in will, I'm saying uh, those policies that will look at rural transformation, because that is the most important thing that will keep us in the rural areas. Young people in rural areas have the potential to become leaders of change for inclusive rural transformation. Investing in young people generates significant potential uh, social and economic returns and can help to tackle root causes of forced displacement. To find out the needs of the youth within the context in which they live for us to understand what to do to help them advance in their lives. The key objective of this initiative is Five million young people benefit from training opportunities and one million decent jobs are created for young people by 2022. This young generation, in particular in rural areas, deserves our increased attention. We need to form multi-stakeholder alliances, build political partnerships, ensure, ensure continuity and coherence of our nation.